Hi guys. Hello out there in Facebook world. Yeah. Hello family. Say something. Say hello. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you. We worship you, Jesus, for you're the faithful one. You alone are faithful, God. You alone are beautiful, Jesus. Father, we bless you. Holy Ghost, I love you. Hi, Becky. How are you, honey? Bless you. Hi, Ivan. Hi, Constance. Hello, South Africa. I love you, South Africa. Yeah. Rostondo Shondi Araba. Hi, Kenya. Hello, baby. How are you? Bless you. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, God. We worship you, Jesus. Man, I feel praise in my in my heart already. I feel fierceness of praise. I'm hoping to read you uh, some scriptures, you know. I just want to make sure I'm tracking live, guys. So let's see. Give me a minute. Let me see what's happening. Robo sondo, rostondo, o shondo, robo bo, brasta ka robo shondo. Yeah, we are tracking live. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Holy Ghost, we love you. Holy Ghost, we love you. Yeah. Robo sondi, a shendi, a rababa, koto robo bo bo. Yeah, so we worship you, Jesus. Yeah. I don't feel like I can move from the praise, you know. Bresondo robo shondia rababa keto robo bobo bob. I speak the breakthrough of heaven over your life. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus. Let the Christ be glorified in our hearts. Father, thank you. King Jesus, may we see you for how you really are, victorious and mighty God. Father, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm telling you, I meet so many Christians. And I, I meet Christians that confess Jesus, but I, I don't see transformation in their life. And so I'm hoping I can just break open a teaching, a little bit of a teaching, a little bit of insight that um, I have, you know, and, and how to have breakthrough, you know. And I just hear people crying out for transformation, you know, all your life. You hear about Jesus, but why doesn't your life look like Jesus? You know, I know a lot of us are saying that, hey, man, I've been reading the Bible all my life. I've been going to church all my life, but why don't I look like Jesus? Father, what am I missing, Lord? And there's a parable. I'm just going to get straight into it. There's a parable in Matthew. Matthew 13. It's the parable of the farmer scattering seed. Hi, Sylvia. Hi, Julie West. Yeah. So it's the parable of the farmer scattering seed. It's Matthew 13. So let's just go into it. <clears throat> it says, listen, a farmer went out to plant some seeds as he scattered them across his field. Some seeds fell on a footpath and the birds came and ate them. Other seeds fell on shallow soil with underlying rock. The seeds sprouted quickly because the soil was shallow. But the plants soon withered under the hot sun. And since they didn't have deep roots, I want you to catch that word. And since they didn't have deep roots, they died. Other seeds fell among thorns that grew up and choked out the tender plants. I want you to catch the word thorns. Other seeds fell among thorns that grew up and choked out the tender plants. Still, other seeds fell on fertile soil. I want you to say fertile soil with me. Catch these words. One had shallow soil. The other one had thorns. <clears throat> and they didn't produce. Still other seeds fell on fertile soil. Say fertile soil. And they produced a crop that was 30, 60, and even 100 times as much has been planted. I want you to reference the point. There is growth in the fertile soil, even though it comes in different numbers. It represents fertile soil. OK, even even a hundred times. OK, so still other seeds fell on fertile soil and they produced a crop that was 30, 60 and even a hundred times as much as had been planted. Anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. 
his disciples, it goes in to say his disciples came and asked him, why do you use, why do you use parables when you talk to the people? He replied, you are permitted to understand the secrets of the kingdom of heaven. So I'm speaking to you guys. You guys are permitted to understand the secrets of heaven. Amen. To those who listen to my teaching, more understanding will be given and they will have an abundance of knowledge. Sounds a lot like the um, the talent story, you know, to who has more will be given. Amen. Amen. So you get a little bit of teaching, understanding God will multiply it greatly. Okay. But for those who are not listening, now everyone has a physical ear. He's saying, do you have spiritual ears? Can you hear what the spirit is saying? All right. So this is just a hint of a teaching because this is so layered. So we're just going to keep going. Holy Ghost, we love you. To those who listen to my teaching, more understanding will be given and they will have an abundance of knowledge. But for those who are not listening, even what little understanding they have will be taken away from them. That is why I use these parables. It, he says, for they look, but they don't really see. They hear, but they don't really understand. Jesus, help us, Lord. I'm jumping down to 15 or 14. This fulfills the prophecy of Isaiah that says, when you hear what I say, you will not understand. When you see what I do, you will not comprehend. This is referencing people that try to understand spiritual things with their natural ear. People that try to see the kingdom with a natural eye. First of all, to be able to understand the kingdom and see the kingdom, you must be born again. You must die with Jesus and get resurrected into glory with him. You must be born of spirit. You must have the Lord's spirit to understand what the spirit is saying. You must have the Lord's spirit to see what the Lord is saying. This type of understanding and seeing and fertile soil. How do you get a heart that's fertile, guys? You die with Jesus, and what do you get? You get a brand new heart. All things become new. This verse is in connection with baptism, you dying to everything you were never meant for, and you being resurrected in glory. Amen. So just catch what the Spirit of God is saying. I just, I just thank you, God, for the Spirit speaking. Okay. Let's jump down to talking about the parable of the seed okay so it says now listen to the explanation of the parable about the farmer planting seed these are the keys to transformation check this out okay now listen we're at 18 now listen to the explanation of the parable about the farmer planting seeds the seed that fell on the footpath represents those who hear the message about the kingdom and don't understand it. There's some key words in here. First of all, we know we got to be born again. Amen. We get a brand new heart. Your heart is no longer wicked and deceitful. You get a brand new heart. Amen. You're married to the Christ. You are fused with him. You are one spirit. He who joins himself with the Lord is one. Amen. It says so. The seed that fell on the footpath represents those who hear the message. Oh, yeah, okay. The seed that fell on the footpath represents those who hear the message about the kingdom. First of all, how do you hear the message about the kingdom unless you're born again? Amen. Seeing the kingdom is directly connected to repentance. Repentance, it says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repentance is directly related to your ability to see the kingdom right here, right now. Repentance isn't a groveling, oh, woe is me, a shame session. It is, hey, wake up, stupid. The kingdom's right here, right now. Take it. Take advantage of it. Of course, he probably doesn't say stupid. 
You know, but Paul does in Galatians. What does he say? Hey, you idiots. Okay, so let, let's keep going. It says, yeah, the seed that fell on the footpath represents those who hear the message about the kingdom and don't understand it. First of all, how do you get an understanding heart? When did you get a new heart? How about in the death of Jesus? How about when you died, something amazing was given to you and it's the heart of God. Amen. The heart of Jesus, the spirit of the Lord. What's in the spirit of the Lord? The seven spirits. How about understanding is one of those attributes? Amen. So understanding comes from the Holy Ghost. Okay. Amen. So it says, the seed that fell on the footpath represents those who hear the message about the kingdom and don't understand it. Then the evil one comes and snatches away the seed that was planted in hearts. The second one, you ready? The seed on the rocky soil represents those who hear the message and immediately receive it with joy. But since they don't have deep roots, they don't last long. They fall away. As soon as they have problems or are persecuted for believing God's word. Okay, listen to this key, guys. The seed on the rocky soil represents those who hear the message and immediately receive it with joy. You ever met people that come to church and they get happy for a minute or they, they meet Jesus and they're excited for a moment, right? But all of a sudden, you know, they're not doing so hot. But since they don't have deep roots, this is the key right here. What are you supposed to be rooted and grounded in? You're supposed to be rooted and grounded in love. Who is love? It says God is love. So because people are not rooted and grounded in love, love doesn't seek its own. So it's directly tied to seeking your own seeking your own will okay i hope i hope you're tracking with me so when they're not rooted and grounded in the love of god when they're not rooted and grounded into unselfish behavior and all the attributes of love it says that um they fall away when they get problems you know why because most of us are are, are presented a gospel that's supposed to be here to serve us you know and so when people aren't rooted and grounded in love, the nature of the Christ, all of a sudden they don't have anything to stand on because they're only standing for themselves. Oh, Jesus. Okay, is this making sense? Hey, when, when you're rooted and grounded in love and you're not seeking your own, how does... How, how do the cares of the world come and, and toss you around when you're not in it for you? Okay, so that's the second key. All right, we are to be rooted and grounded in the love of God. Amen. And, and I'm going to read here. They fall away as soon as they have problems or are persecuted for believing God's word. What are we supposed to believe? Read the book of Galatians, guys. It talks about in Christ alone. We're made whole in Christ alone. Where does persecution come from? It comes from knife, happy, religious, legalistic circumcisers that want to mutilate your flesh and throw you back into the system of Moses and the law. Okay, and make you earn something that was freely given by the Christ. All right, so I hope you're tracking with me. There's some really cool cool um, nuggets and keys in here so that you can live transformed, you know. And so the seed that fell among the thorns. And, okay, so this word persecution is the same word that's tied to when Paul says, hey, can you remove this from me? And God says, no, no, no. I promised you persecution. Persecution comes, why? For the word's sake, amen. And so God's not removing that. God's not removing you know, that kind of stuff. But the only way to be rooted and grounded and not be thrown 
you know, into chaos is to be rooted and grounded in the love of God, which is the nature of the Christ himself. Humility, kindness, gentleness, long suffering, meekness. Okay, you guys tracking with me? All right, so let's go here. The seed that the seed on the rocky soil represents those who hear the message and immediately. Oh, we read that. Let's go to 21. But since they don't have deep roots, they don't last long and they fall away as soon as they have problems or are persecuted for believing God's word. This this have you ever met people and they're like, I tried I tried to do it God's way, but it didn't work out for me. Listen to the verbiage people are saying what's in a person's heart comes out through their mouth. What they're saying is. I tried to believe in God for my own benefits, but God didn't fulfill what I thought he should fulfill. So therefore it doesn't work for me. That's what their heart is revealing. Okay. And so it's okay. If, if you've been in that mindset, just say I'm divorcing that mindset and come into the reality right now. Come in, come in, come into transformation right now. Okay. So it says, um, hallelujah, Jesus, we love you. Amen. The seed that we're going to go into 22. The seed that fell among the thorns represents those who hear God's word. But all too quickly, the message is crowded out by the worries of this life and the lure of wealth. So no fruit is produced. How is fruit produced, guys? Isn't it a fruit of the spirit? Come on. Paul says to Timothy, don't neglect the gift that's given to you. Stir up the Holy Ghost. How about you just acknowledging Holy Ghost dwelling in the presence of God? Amen. That's another key. You ready? Let's jump to 23. The seed that fell on good ground on good soil represents those who truly hear and understand God's word and produce a harvest of 30, 60, or even a hundred times as much as had been planted. So the first seed, they don't lack any kind of understanding. It says they hear the kingdom, but they don't understand. They don't understand what this life in God is all about. They don't understand that you're promised the nature of the Christ that your promised relationship and communion with God Almighty. They don't understand that the purposes of God will prevail, not your own personal purposes, but the purposes of God will prevail. They don't understand that this isn't a all for me, bless me gospel. They've been taught wrong, you know, and so when things don't go their way, they say, oh, forget this. I tried God. Forget it. No, what they're saying is I plugged him into my formula. And because he didn't come through on how I thought he should, I'm giving up. But see, now I everyone is preaching. Uh, well, not everyone, but, you know, the message of righteousness and the nature of the Christ is running rampant right now. And so there's so much understanding available. Amen. OK. So, Holy Ghost, we love you. So the first one represents an understanding heart now the first one represents not being rooted and grounded in love amen actually let's see no the first one i'm sorry let me track here the first one represents an understanding heart an understanding of why you're born again understanding what the purposes of god are 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 in your life not your own life it's his story you are partnering with the lord you don't have your own agenda you don't have your own only the plans of god prosper <laughs> you know only the plans of god prosper amen everything god puts his hand to prospers okay the second one the the um the seed gets snatched because they're not rooted and grounded in love Amen. They're not rooted and grounded in God. Amen. They might be rooted and grounded in uh, they, they might they might prophesy. They might do miracles. They might be a teacher. They might preach, but they're not rooted and grounded in in love. And so, um, you know, they don't do so well. You know, they fall off. 
because they're they're not in it for God themselves because love God is love you know okay so yeah I hi mama my mom's on hi mom my mom is Julie love you mama hallelujah okay and then it says but and then the third one let's see okay the third one let's see it says the cares and problems of this world come and they get pull, pulled pulled away this third key is directly related to your ability to perceive past your circumstances this third one is directly related to your ability to have the perspective of the christ so that you run well amen okay let's just read it again it says the seed that fell among thorns represent those who hear god's word but all too quickly the message is crowded out by the worries of this life and the lore of wealth so that no fruit is produced what do thorns represent the cares of this world right so if you don't get a, a bigger perspective than your little life if you don't get the perspective of god and why you're here for the purposes of his kingdom we're in his world breathing his air created living in a body that he made for us amen so if you don't get beyond yourself if you don't get an eternal perspective it says that you'll fall away because life will try to come and overwhelm you and so holy ghost so that's just a little bit of a nugget you know those are just some keys to um transformation amen so father i bless your word i bless what you're doing right now and i bless um i bless you holy spirit i trust you for preaching the kingdom of heaven jesus father i thank you in the name of jesus you know i i um and am, am doing um a conference you know this weekend and um it made me so sad you know what someone said to me you know i i preach on intimacy with the bridegroom because intimacy with god is the safest place you can be it's only from that place that things get produced in your life it's only from abiding in the christ it ends striving and performance and it ends man pleasing self-hatred all of that it's the only way to allow the kingdom of god to flow through you but i was on a call i was on a call today and the lady said to me she said amber you know i've been doing this for like 15 oh sorry i've been doing this for like 15 years and we've never had anyone speak about intimacy with jesus and okay i got sad it it made me really sad because what that means is you've been talking all around god talking about the things of god but you don't understand that this is about union with god that this is about just being with the christ it's not about talking of the attributes of god it's not about performing miracles or a doing list it's about being with the christ amen and so it just um because you know i i preach on this and i think well people just get it but then when you hear that I, it just makes you sad, you know, and so like if if you're doing things for God and you're talking about God and um, you're memorizing scripture, but you don't know him, you've totally missed it. You've, if your hearts, if your heart doesn't come alive, just being with him and being intimate with him, then you've missed it, you know. You've missed it. He does not need anything from you. You know, in Hosea, it says, uh, I don't want sacrifices. He's saying, I want you. I want your heart. You know, just give me your affection. You know, he is the faithful one. He is the faithful husband. Amen. He is the faithful husband. 
Yeah, he is the faithful one. Holy Ghost, we love you. We love you, Jesus. We worship you, God. We worship you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. You know, it's so crazy that people think, first of all, when you're made, you didn't make yourself. You had no control over your eyes, your, your skin, the way you looked, the way you were formed. You didn't have anything to do with it. And then you come into someone else's world. This is, this is not your world that you made. You're breathing someone else's air. You're seeing through a set of eyes you didn't make yourself. You're breathing in a nose that you didn't make yourself. And you're using breath to formulate words that you didn't make yourself. So why do we think our life belongs to us? It's the craziest thing to me that humanity thinks that their life is their own when they didn't have anything to do with making themselves. It is such a deception in a mind where people think that this life belongs to them. You were made for God. You're here because God made you. You live in his world. You are talking to his creation. Every life you get to come in contact with is a direct result because it's not some, I mean, we get the privilege of stewarding and watching over God's people. But the mistake is people don't belong to us. We get the, the, the benefit and the beauty of living life with God's children, but they don't belong to us. I cannot make a cell. I cannot make air. I cannot make water. And people get this idea that this life is theirs when they cannot make themselves. And they, they didn't have anything to do with how the sun is held up, how the, how the earth has oxygen for humanity to live. They don't have anything to do with making it, but then they get in their minds and their self-righteous attitudes and in deception. And they think they have so much say so in a life that doesn't even belong to them. You know, let's see God correctly. Amen. This life is a gift. This life is a gift. Your itty bitty life is a gift what will you do with the gift of life will you live it for yourself in deception living for yourself is deception because surely you will return to the point you came from amen yeah holy ghost we love you jesus we honor you father we love you jesus Yes, yeah, so I actually, Holy Ghost, we love you. We love you, Jesus. I feel like I have a word, you know. Tondo robo bo bo bo. Kondo robo sondia shandi. Robo sondo shondia rababa. Prestondo kotia rama. Brekaye show. Robo stende rababa baba. What are you going to use your breath for, guys? Amen. What are you going to use your life for? It's only the purposes and plans of God that prevail. Amen. Amen. Yeah, your little itty bitty life. What are you going to use it for? Amen. Come on, Jesus. Father, I ask for hope to be ignited, Jesus. The reality of knowing your presence, God. The reality of knowing you, King Jesus. Father, may we be fully satisfied just in relationship with you. May that be our highest blissful ecstatic moment is just knowing you, Jesus. May our life be full just by being with you, God. Holy Spirit, let us introduce the bridegroom, Jesus, the passionate lover, Jesus. You know, 
if you're reading the word of God without the pivotal moment, the, the whole Bible points to the cross and the redemption of Jesus. If you're reading the word of God without that pivotal moment, then you're missing it. You're missing it. You'll be freaked out when you read the Old Testament. You, you'll get condemned. You, it says in Hebrews, I've come in the volume of the book. So just to read a portion of scripture without putting it in context with the volume of the book, the finished work of Jesus, what Jesus Christ has accomplished on your behalf is a total disservice. We, the, the cross is the pivotal moment that reconciles us to God. You have to read the word through that lens. Come on, guys. It's time to get healthy. It's time to get healthy in the word. Amen. You have this little itty bitty life. Okay. Let's go from the point where Jesus finished it, which is the cross. Yeah. And you will run well. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Ghost, we love you. Holy Spirit, we love you. Hey, Julie West. Yeah, I think I have a word for you. I don't know if you're about to send out missionaries or uh, what you're about to do, but I just see you connected to sending people out, Julie. And so um, I don't know if you yourself are about to get sent out, but I just see mission work, you know, mission work for you. Yeah, I see mission work for you, Julie. Yeah. So I don't know if that makes sense, Julie, but I just bless your hand and and I just see your um, desire to love on children and God's children and the ability to want to feed them and all of that, you know. And so God's all over that. So I just bless you. Yeah. Holy Ghost, Kristen Erickson, Hoey. Yeah, Jesus. Come on. I just feel like God. Hallelujah. I just feel like, you know, I feel like God is just sweeping through thoughts for you right now. I, I, I believe you're starting to get inspired by the thoughts of God for your life. And I just see like transformation in your thought life. And so Kristen, I just bless what God is doing. And I just see the Lord reviving your thought life. And yeah, so thank you, Jesus. Amen. Oh, praise God. Come on. Look at that. Thank you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. We love you. Yeah, I feel like I'm hunting right now. Praise Emmanuel. Do you have um do you have a sister praise Emmanuel? Yeah, do or are you a part of like a, um praying for women? What are you doing? Praise Emmanuel. What is that all about? Shondo robo bo 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 shondo robo bo. Praise Emmanuel. Yeah, I don't know if you have a sister or you're praying in a, a group of women or who these ladies are, but I see you leading them to um streams you know i see you as a connector and networking and so i just bless um you have this direction thing on your life and where you give people direction how to uh find you know holy ghost and so i just bless you praise emmanuel yeah and praise emmanuel there is a ministry coming out of you and so i don't know if you've already started it but i just saw the lord on it and so let me know if that makes sense i just bless you yeah thank you jesus Oh, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Holy Ghost, we love you. Yeah. Come on, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. So praise Emmanuel. I don't know if you're wanting a new building, you know, but I don't know if it's going to come in the next three years or not. I'm not exactly sure on the timing, but I saw a new piece of property coming to you. So just be excited. And I saw sheep on the property and so i don't know if that is um a literal or you know sheep representing um you know in the spirit so yeah amen come on jesus we love you we love you jesus so yeah holy ghost you're my best friend god and i love you jesus you are the faithful one god you are the faithful one jesus O contora bosonda shundora bastie brastondia sturom stekira Did you guys see the new house I got? Yeah. 
That's a total testimony. Someone gave me the house. Someone gave me the house. And I just want to share. Oh, you're welcome, honey. Bless you. Someone gave me a piece of property. It's like two acres. Someone gave it to me. And I'll share a crazy story with you. Um, they bring me in and they're like, hey, do you like this house? And I'm like, yeah, it's a nice house. But, uh, you know, I don't know. I can't I don't know about, you know, paying for this house and and all that. And she and they're like, you know, I'm not interested in your money, lady. That's what they're saying to me. Right. And I'm like, what? And I'm like, what? And I go, wait a minute. Well, I, I would only take this house if I could start a house church here. And they go, yeah. We know. That's why we're giving it to you. Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? God shared his plans with them and they were just jumping on it. And so, yeah, so I'm stoked, you know. Praise God. It, I, You know, I've been painting that house and my friends have been painting that house. You guys, I am so sore. I have been painting that house. I, I used muscles I didn't even know I had, okay? <laughs> I use muscles I didn't even know I had and so yeah if you guys want to come out to the house church let me know I'll put you up in my I have an upper room you know and so um yeah it's gonna be a glory center I tell you what I I went to walk on the property and I got glory whacked man I got whacked I couldn't even get in my front door I got whacked so hard. I got glory whacked, man. I'm telling you. So, yeah. Hey, Jesus, we love you. Come on. Hey, God, we love you. Yeah, someone's saying it was a good workout. Yeah. You guys like my hair down? You know, you guys are my family. I don't know. I'm not a big hair down person. I don't know. I don't like things in my face. So if it looks weird, pray for me. Give me grace, okay? I love you guys. Mwah. Yeah, I just wanted to love on you guys. Mama, my mom says I'm painting now. Are you having church this Sunday? N um, probably not at the house, mom. Probably not at the house because I need to get chairs and I need to get a uh, microphone set up and uh, yeah, all that kind of stuff. But I will be officially moved in. Oh, Christina says love you here. I love Christina. Yeah, I just love her. She's gorgeous. She's like, I just love Christina Lynn. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay, guys. Yeah, I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to chat this weekend, you know, because I will be moving. And the only thing I have is my bedroom set. I don't have any furniture yet. But uh, so we'll see what happens. Amen. Oh, crazy manual. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, guys. Love you. Mwah. See you Monday night for school. Hey, oh yeah, we have a school, Intense Intimacy. Some of you guys are in the school. So I will see you in school. Oh, hold on. What city, state is the house in? I am 20 minutes outside of D.C. I am in Bowie, Maryland. Yeah. Okay. Love you guys. Bless you. Bless you. I love you, Mama. Love you very much, Mom. I just want to. I just want to talk about my mom for a minute, you guys. Oh, mom, do I still need painting done? No. Yeah. You know what, mom? We're having a family conversation live. Hi, Mary. And I love you, honey. Mom, I want to paint my cabinets. I want to paint them. My kitchen cabinets. Could you help me come paint them? I want to paint them like, a, um, I, well, I'll tell you after this broadcast. Yeah. So yeah, I want to paint them a certain color, mom, but I would like, I would like to paint them like that, you know? Okay. What else? What else? Holy Ghost, we love you. Oh, yeah, please. Yeah, come over tomorrow, Mom. <laughs> oh, yeah, what I wanted to do was talk about my mom. Do you know what? My mom wanted to either be a painter or a missionary. Little did I know that until I got involved in ministry. And my mom is a Holy Ghost-filled woman. She loves Jesus. And I learned a lot about love through my mom. I rem I mean, yeah. So my mom is like a laid down lover of God and lover of people. But my mom is super strong. I mean, she's done construction. She's done firefighting. She's a welder, you know. 
she's gorgeous and she loves well. So my mom is super duper strong. And uh, yeah. And so mama, I just honor you and I bless you and I love you. Okay, guys. Love you so much. See ya.